I'm Betty McCracken. I work for the Monacan Soil and Water Conservation District. We cover Goochland and Powhatan counties. I'm going to discuss a little story with you. It's called Who Polluted the River? It gives us an idea of the human impacts that we have on our natural resources. I have with me today an example of the James River, which flows between Goochland and Powhatan counties, but it could be any river in the continental U.S. So imagine that this was our river before the settlers came from England, and it's nice and clear. You can see the there's a seahorse in there, and seahorses are native to the Chesapeake Bay. There's an American eel, which is native to the uh, James River. There's a catfish swimming around in there, and the water looks very clear. I would swim in there with those fishes. So here goes your little story. The river has changed a lot since it was first explored. Years went by and storms came and drenched the river. Gradually towns started on the banks of the river. Developers cleared the wetlands and forests to build houses and businesses. Rain washed construction sites into the river. So this is some erosion from construction sites going into the river. At first, towns were small. Upstream, farmers planted crops to feed towns' growing populations. Some of those crops grew right up to the river, and the fertilizer washed into the, into the water, causing some pollution. Farmers don't do that anymore. They don't till the land, and they have living roots on their, on their fields all the time to stop erosion. But this was a long time ago, remember. As towns grew, more and more people began to move nearby in the countryside. Countryside homes are not connected to sewer systems. Wastewater from your house flows into a septic tank. Sometimes uh, people do not maintain their septic tanks and the poorly treated sewage seeps into the river. Ugh. To meet the electricity needs of the towns, area officials decided that they would need to generate more power. To burn coal and produce power, an electric power plant was built along the river. Gases coming out of the smokestacks combined with moistures in the air to form acid rain. The pollution falls back to the earth as acid rain or smog. Traffic congestion can also be a problem for commuters and truck drivers who drive back and forth from work. Exhaust fumes, just like power plant emissions, can cause acid rain. If a vehicle is not kept in good repair, it might leak oil or other fluids which wash off into the pavement and into the bay or river with the next rain. And how do the residents of the town and surrounding areas spend their time? In one neighborhood, gardeners are out working in their yards. Some of them are using pesticides, which are bug killers, and herbicides, which are weed killers, to keep their lawns pretty. The next rain will wash some of these into the creek and then into the river. One father is teaching his daughter how to change the antifreeze in the family truck. They pour out the used antifreeze into the driveway. Antifreeze is sweet tasting and can poison animals if they drink it and it's really very poisonous to animals. It can get into the nearby creek and poison fish. Nearby, a boy is washing the car. The soapy water rushes down the driveway and into the storm drain. The storm drain empties into the river. The grease and grime from a car contains asphalt from the road, asbestos from the brakes, rubber particles from the tire, toxic metals, and rust. If the boy had gone to the local car wash, the water would have been treated before it was returned to the river. On nice days, many people head towards the river, especially in the summertime like we've been doing. Some zoom all around on, in motorboats and don't notice little oil leaks into the water. Lots of families are picnicking too. Some of these people left trash on the side of the river and they didn't pick it up. With the next storm, the trash will wash into the river on the shore, one person is fishing and snags a hook on the 
out there and on a log and breaks his nylon fishing line. Would you drink this water now? Can you even see the little animals that live in there? Who polluted the water? Don't say me. <laughs> yes, I made a mess here, but we all did this and we can all clean it up. There are many ways that we can clean this up. So the ways we clean up the river are called best management practices. Like I said, farmers don't till the soil anymore. They have living roots on their fields. We don't have to leave trash on the, on the side of the river, do we? There are ways to keep all this out of, the, out of the river. So we polluted the river. We made the mess. We can clean up the mess. Think about it. Thank you.